All right, well, good morning and welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast for today, Sunday, May 30th, 2020. Great to see so many smart traders joining us from around the world. The longest running webinar series in the trading industry, uh, over six years every Saturday, almost 6,000 registered, so pretty good epic number. And I appreciate y'all for being here. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your Saturday to listen to my ramblings on the market. As always, all information is for educational use only. I'm not making advice about to buy, sell, or hold, blah, 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 blah. Don't make actual trades based on this. Do your own due diligence. Consult with a registered investment advisor, which I'm not, before making your own trade setups. Anyway, markets have been slowly grinding higher, despite all common sense, right? Hey, 30 million people unemployed, biggest number since the Great Depression. Nah, who cares? Global pandemic, the likes of what we haven't seen for 100 years since the Spanish flu. Ah, shrug it off. Epic bankruptcies and small and mid-cap businesses going out of business left and right. Nah, pishaw. The market still wants to go higher. Nobody accused the market of being rational. Biggest disconnect ever between Main Street and Wall Street. What you and I want to do is profit from whatever is running, right? So whether you're looking at hot charts like Z and GA yesterday did a really nice run, uh, or charts like uh, DraftKings. DKNG, that's one of my swing scans picks, and I'll be going over a specific trading strategy, a very valuable one that's proprietary unique that I'll be covering for my swing scans members in about half an hour. So if you're a swing scans member, look forward to this. This DKNG strategy is one you want to work with. So, But anyway, those kind of charts are great. What does the broad market tell us? Well, one of the, the key takeaways is the first thing you always want to be on the lookout for is not the, the slope of the line of the trend is one thing. The height of the candles is another. The color of the candles, the sequence of them is the best trend would be like the DKNG, large, big, honking green candles in an uptrend. Uh, that's the best, strongest 45 degree angle breakout, not a straight up, but a 45 degree angle or 30 degree angle. A steady, slow and steady move up. Uh, that's moderately strong is good. Now, this is a weak move up. The market's been in congestion. It finally broke that all-important 3,000 level in the S&P, and that's the institutional buy signal. So we're still in a long bias market, and for that reason, I'm trading not only long instruments like my PIN stock, P-E-N-N -N Gaming is a good one, but other sectors that are making sense as well. And one thing we want to pay attention to in a broad market is do we break out, say, over 3,100? Do we lose the 2,950? What kind of game plan can we put together that makes sense? Now, visually, it's really important to keep a careful eye, as I've been saying for the last couple of months here, on the VIX. And the VIX key support and resistance are those nearest moving average lines, the 25 support, 35 resistance. The VIX is inversely correlated with the market. It tends to be fear indicator. When it goes up, the market's usually going down. So for that reason, we want to see what it does. We still have a downtrending VIX. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to when it comes to trading the market is when do the candles start to get, you know, say this this tall or bigger, for example. That's a relatively moder moderately small range candle. These are large range candles back here. All during the March sell-off and the uh, late March recovery, we saw large whole row body wide trading ranges, which are easier to trade. How many of you have been struggling? I've been struggling. I've been screwing up. Well, I don't say screw up, but I've been over trading. So I, I guess I've uh, been a little too aggressive in what's normally a, or what's been recently a relatively range bound market with compressed trading ranges. But how many of you have been struggling just a little bit, uh, especially day trading? Uh, we, we do a good job in the live room for the outlier charts, but uh, for swing trades, it's been a relatively slow grind and it really tests your patience. I don't know how many of you share my frustration in the markets, but it's been a very, very slow grind. I prefer something up or something down, but sideways slow chop with narrow range days. Typical dog days of summer markets here early in May makes for a little bit of a frustrating trade setup. Hey, John, frustrated too. Hey, another John. Hey, Damon. Hey, Fernando. Mira, holding your own so far. That's good. Hey, Guillermo. Hey, Presh, thanks. Hey, TJ. Hey, Deanna. Yeah, so my message to you is 
<laughs> to myself too is wait for key you know the rock star charts only and it's easier said than done right because i love the trade right i was there dozens of trades yesterday but kind of treading water right uh, close to break even and and the problem with that is uh, you want to be selective in your trade so for that reason it makes sense to look at rock star charts that have good volatility so let's take a look at a few recent headlines in novovax a nice gap up Ran up at all these red candles in a row spell trouble. Maybe worth a shot if it breaks back over 50, but I'm going to stay clear unless it breaks 50 at the earliest for Novavax. And that's all I got to say about it. Was, uh, I don't care about the company or forward earnings or EBITDA or growth or whatever. We're looking for price action breakouts. This one, uh, BJ Wholesale, it did a nice gap run and a sideways. And this is often kind of the upside down L, like an L-shaped curve like this. You often get a swoop up and either a mean reversion, 50% pullback chop, uh, or a quiet resting day after the big day. After the big day of a gap, or the big day of a wide range a gap and a big run in this case, uh, it's been quiet. But these are what I call sleeping giants, because oftentimes the institutional buy prey, especially when they don't give back their <laughs> range, if it had been back down here, Sleepy Hollow, I wouldn't be too excited about it. But this guy I like if it does break out to new highs back over this upper candle shadow up near the high 38s. Anyway, the, what you're looking for is money flow. Money finds a home. You know, not like that movie Wall Street. Money finds a home. Money's like water. And when you see a lot of money flow into an instrument and then it doesn't give it right back, which has been the case with a lot of charts lately, uh, it's holding its own. That's a good setup or a good indicator that it might be worth a shot if it takes out new highs. Or cannabis got smoked a little bit. It got a really big run up from 6 to 18. It tripled in value and then it, it quieted. But this is again that same kind of chart pattern. I don't see other than this red candle. I, the story of candles has been undecided selling lately, but if it comes back to life over 18, it may make sense. One that I was trading was Canopy Growth, my favorite of the pot stocks. <clears throat> and you can see it was doing nicely there until yesterday's earnings miss announced pre-market and then it plummeted down from 20, the 20-ish 20 to the 17 level. And you can see in that chart, that's the pattern. So maybe of interest if it breaks back over this 1860 or so, but it's more likely to go down than up. So we're gonna stay clear of it for now. So many charts. So is the BJ, and then Zynga was a big move up yesterday as well, ZNGA. So we got some good charts. And one thing it helps is to pay attention to the sectors. And if you look at, say, the semiconductor sector, the SOX chart, you can see it's in a slow grind up and nothing spectacular. If you look at our pharmaceutical chart, DRG, you can see it's got three days of moderate move. But big picture right now, the market is slowly moving up, but it's relatively undecided. We have a slight bullish bias, but the way to, I think the correct way to trade the current market is to focus on the Obviously, the charts with the best consistent uptrends, whether you're looking at ones like I'm in PENN. I didn't trade DKNG, but I'm still long and in, in the money and pin. I bought it way back in the drop and I just sat on it and that paid off. So that's good. The DKNG is a good example of a rare exceptional chart that has large green candles lately and an otherwise relatively quiet market. And that's really the one of the things I want you to start looking for are these lead indicators. And I teach how to do that in the live trading room at tradingopen.com. But uh, we're looking for things like my favorite two candle breakout pattern. We got a small whole row body candle followed by a large whole row body candle. Small followed by a large and an uptrend is a good, especially when accompanied by increasing volume. 
that's a good price action breakout signal I've taught for many years. And that's something that is especially useful to wait for patiently if you're able to in our current markets. Does that make sense? So just a reminder, I know many of you have been with me for years and thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, but small followed by larger whole row body candles. Now that's rare, we don't see that many. In this current market, it's been a lot of choppy candles or these one hit wonder under $10 pop and drop stocks that have been very inconsistent, like say CODX comes to mind. And those will just get you in trouble for the most part. You wanna focus instead on directional volatility charts that have sustainable price action. And those are very hard to find. See, with a lot of the momentum stocks currently, you get a pop and drop, right? Then they'll do a swoop up, a parabolic arc, like a skyrocket going whoosh. That's frustrating. My best winning days, weeks, months, and years as a trader has come from more consistent charts. And so those are ones that we want to focus our energy on. So what else are you guys trading? Let's pull up a few tickers together. Hey, thanks, Phil. This is the end of second quarter test today, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, good job. Hey, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Hey, Matt. PRTS. Let's take a look. Hey, Steve. SNDA. Sure thing. Let's pull up some charts together. I like doing these collaboratively. Remember, I'm doing free daily, Monday through Friday, closing bell webinars from 3.30 to 4. And to register for those, just go to trademastery.com forward slash TTO free. Okay. So I'm asking about SNDA. A lot of you have been asking about ZS. And I like it because the gap continuation, it, it held the gap and it kept running up. What I don't like is it's pretty expensive, but it does have the range. It does have 12 points of range for a $90 instrument. So from a valuation standpoint, if it breaks and holds over a hundred, it may be worth the consideration. But personally, I would wait till, not a trading recommendation, I would wait till 101.50 would be the specific inflection point because we'd expect some shake and some false breakout region between the 98 and the 100, maybe 101. So I want to wait for it to get over 101. That allows it to establish a foothold, break above resistance, and continue on up. But yeah, that's a good chart. Thanks. Hey, Fernando. D Dog. That's a ZS gap yesterday. Yeah, that's a good chart. I like that one. That one had a good history. It's been kind of subdued the last several weeks, but it had a nice, really nice run, right? A nice over doubling from 30 to 70. So that's a good chart. Yeah, D-Dog, that's a good one. Good pick, man. See another chart, CRWD. Thanks, guys. I, I want to do a little bit more of this. Yeah, that's a good chart. Again, it's higher than I like to pay for my stocks. I like $20, $30 stocks, but a great trend, right? This guy ran from 30 to 80, so it's over doubled. CR, CRWD is the ticker. It's in Charlie Romeo Whiskey Delta, CRWD. Hey, Andy, let's see your trading SNOA. SNOA, let's take a look. Now that looks like a horrible chart. Well, let's let's look. Zoom in on this guy. No, no, that that's a terrible chart. You would never want to trade that. It got circuit breaker halted three times, and the upside potential was you would have had to be really lucky to make money with that one. So good luck if, if you did well with that one. But I, that's not my kind of chart. Not my kind of chart. I like charts that are more consistent, like that. Much easier, right? Easier on the easier on the pocketbook and easier on the peace of mind too, because really what you want as a trader is consistency. And a lot of the one thing, just a public service announcement I keep making is a lot of these young Yahoo 
day trader wannabes who were in kindergarten when I was day trading back in the 90s, guys who don't know what the FUDs are talking about, are advocating those type of charts that are pop and drop like video game one hit wonders. And those are very dangerous. And most people do very poorly with those kind of charts. If you do trade cheap charts, this would be a good example of the kind that you'd want to focus on, one that has a consistent uptrend uh, versus the pop and drop or the gap and crap uh, or the pre-market run up and end market drop. And you've seen it all, right? And so what you want is consistent charts. Hey, Yandy says, I was lucky to make anything. Well, congratulations. Yeah, Deanna, yeah, take two was good. That was one we'd covered earlier. Take two interactive. Gaming stocks, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Grand Theft Auto, or my favorite, Dead or Alive 5. But I digress. Yeah, take two, nah, I don't like it because it would have been very difficult to navigate that and make money with it unless you happen to get in right here and happen to get out up there. But for the rest of us, we're mortals. This one would have been tough to scale into because it's relatively inconsistent and it's a pretty choppy chart. So that that one would be tougher to trade. But it did have at least some point range to it. When in doubt, look for charts that have chart patterns that beat the average, right? That beat the S&P and do so with some consistency, right? So you've got increasing large whole body candles. You've got price action that runs up day after day or week after week. Or for day trades, the hot charts that have very specific setups that we teach in my live room at Trading Open. Got just a few minutes left here. Just a reminder to a quick commercial announcement. I do have my live room open five days a week. Uh, we meet usually 8.45 or nine at the latest, but sometimes I show up at 8.30, but usually 8.45 or so, and we stay around until 10.30 or 11 if the market's running. But the stated hours are 9 to 10.30, so I'm always there at least that time, usually early, and I usually come in early and stay late. Um, but we meet five days a week, and the reason it's been popular since the year 2000 when I founded it is we give specific entry paper trading triggers to practice with, and more importantly, the exits live in real time. Like, where's a good time to tighten up a trailing stop? Uh, do you use hard versus trailing stops on this chart versus that chart? What's the trading strategy for a more leisurely intraday swing trade? We put on the trade in the morning, put a stop under support, and then come back later in the day, either midday, 11 or 12, or into the close at 3.30, uh, and tighten up the stop and lock in again, or take a tight stop, as the case may be, uh, based on price action. So I do urge you to try the live room at tradingopen.com. If you have not yet trialed it, you can do so for three weeks for just $7 via PayPal. And if you've already trialed it and you're returning, welcome back. You have my word. I worked really hard in the room. We have so many new members on board. It's been spectacular growth. And I'm working hard to scramble to catch up with all the orders. So I appreciate your interest. And that's at tradingopen.com. A big picture, what I want you to look for next week, Keep watch the VIX like a hawk, okay? I am. The first buy signal is if we break 30. Okay, that's kind of micro resistance one. It's just a straight four-day high in the VIX. So if we break, actually, if I were working with an institutional client, I would say use 31. So that's what I'll tell you guys. Look for scaling out of winning long positions and into the inverse or shorts or putting on puts or whatever you're going to do uh, if the VIX breaks back over 31. That's the core bit of intel. If the VIX breaks 31, you know, watch out below for the stock market. Now, if the VIX drops under 25, that'll confirm the directional uptrend that we got when the S&P first broke 3,000 earlier, right? So keep an eye on the VIX. It's inversely correlated to the stock market. Professional traders will always use the VIX. It's extremely important to understand what the volatility index indicators tell what the volatility indicators telling you uh, in relation to the broad indices. So keep an eye on the VIX. Because you know, if you look at the S and P in isolation, that only gives you part of the story. You know, you want to look at all four indices, whether it's the Russell, the S and P, the Dow, or the Nasdaq, and 
they're all different and you can use a set you can use an overlay chart where you look at and i should probably do that do an overlay chart but i don't think this version a signal supports four overlay charts but the point is uh, you may want to pay attention to all four major indices and see who's leading the pack and who's lagging especially next week now remember we've got the nfp the non-farm payrolls coming out friday and that may put a uh, we've got two economic headwind data we have trump did his tweet and the China premier is undoubtedly going to come back with a retort. Like the great movie Pulp Fiction. Allow me to retort. Say what again, mother Pulp Fiction. <laughs> anyway, Trump, Trump threw a dart. Uh, and the China premier, I forgot his name, is going to say something back. That may put a, uh, a red Monday or Tuesday in front of the, the market next week. So be ready for potential selling. A capital, I like to capitalize on it by trading inverse. ETFs like TZA and SQQ, if they ever come back to life, uh, uh, I'm ready on the sidelines here waiting for mostly cash right now, waiting to see good trade setup. So we've got economic headwinds possible if the China Premier says something this weekend or Monday or Tuesday in response to tweets pounding the battle drums for China trade war pending. So uh, we'll see. The market had a positive response yesterday afternoon when China, when Trump said that trade phase one trade deal still alive and kicking. But the point is it's a headline driven market. It has nothing to do with fundamentals, with EBITDA or earnings uh, or the world at large or the 30 million people unemployed or the global pandemic. The stock market's just blithely continuing on up. The party's gonna stop at some point and it's gonna crash and burn. So be ready for it is my point. Uh, we got a little, a few earnings on board next week but nothing really significant. The main two factors impacting next week's markets are going to be Friday's non-farm payrolls report and whatever response from the China premier comes out momentarily, whether it's today or tomorrow, Monday or Tuesday, uh, that will likely have a negative impact on the market as well. So it's a good time to take the profit and run. And I'm going to do that with my PENN uh, winning swing trade and other swing trades I'm in that are in the money. I've got quite a few small position swing trades that are up nicely here because I've held them for quite a few weeks, but I'm going to scale out of those, especially next week on any sign of weakness. So play it smart, play, play, it, play it safe out there, guys. And I'll see you next time. Hey, Fernando, let's see, do I still use IB? Hey, Andy, I don't have time for GSX. And you're right, Mukesh, yeah, it takes two to tango, price action and direction upward. Hey, thanks, you too, man. No, I'm using uh, Fidelity Active Trader Pro to do my day trades and my swing trades right now. I still have my IV account active and my Ameritrade account active, but I'm not trading in those right now. I'm trading uh, pretty much ex well exclusively in my uh, Fidelity account. But their trade station occasionally locks up too, but usually only just for just for a minute or so. So it's, it's still, I'm sure, 99% plus good. So. One thing, a quick technical note, just a quick reminder, just like exercise and getting fresh air, your computer memory needs refreshing too. So if your computer slows down, do use Task Manager to make sure you don't have any junk running in the background and reboot your computer at least once every two weeks at a minimum. And that'll free up memory in case your workstations are freezing. I, I Trader asked about that. So one fix for that is reboot your computer and that often frees up memory page. Anyway. Let's play it safe. Trade smart, everybody, and I'll see you in our next session coming up in a week. And Swing Scans members, I'll see you momentarily. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it.